It was the end of the rebellion, and this day would either make or break the freedom fighters. General Tiber Maximilian Adolphus had struggled for half a decade against the corrupt government of the constellation, taking his cause across the 20 central crown jewel worlds and riding a groundswell of popular support, all of which had led him to here, a last stand where the old regime was bound to collapse. The battle over the planet Sanjira would decide it all. The general's teeth ached from clenching his jaws, but he stood on the bridge of his flagship, ostensibly calm, confident. He had not intended to be a rebel leader, but the role had been forced on him, and he'd never lost sight of the goal. The ancient, incestuous system had oppressed many populations. The more powerful noble families devoured the weaker ones to steal their planetary holdings. Ultimately, even those powerful families split up and tore at one another, as if it were some kind of game. It had gone on far too long. For five years now, the general's ever-growing forces battled old guard loyalists, winning victories and suffering defeats. Any reasonable person could see that the bloated system was rotten, crumbling, unfair to the majority. People across the crown jewels had only needed a man to serve as an example, someone to light the spark and unify their grievances. Adolphus had fallen into it by accident, but like a piece of driftwood caught in a whitewater flood, he had been swept along to his inevitable destination. Now his forces converged over the main prize. Sanjira, with its glorious white stone buildings, tall towers, and ancient museums. Window dressing that made the government appear to be as marvelous as the politicians claimed it was. Diadem Michelle Duchesnay, the supreme ruler, would never admit defeat, clinging to her position of power with cadaverous claws. Rather than relinquish the star throne, the old woman would see the capital world laid to waste, without regard to the innocent citizens she claimed to represent and protect. And if the general let it come to that, he would be no better than Diadem Michela. But he didn't see any way around it. In the battles of the rebellion so far, Adolphus had been careful to keep civilian casualties to a minimum, but he knew the Diadem would eventually force his hand. She would draw a line of morality in front of him and dare him to cross it. Today might be that day. Steady ahead. His flagship, the Jacob, was named after his father, one of the first casualties in the string of political and economic schemes that had provoked Adolphus into action. Frigates and sweepers forward. Open the gun ports and show them we mean business. Aye, General. With an intense focus, he studied the screen and the planet growing larger by the minute. Sanjira sparkled with tiny dots of ships, stations, and orbital activity. It was a sapphire laced with clouds, green continents, and city lights that sparkled across the night side. The crown jewel of all crown jewels. His eyes were dark and old beyond his years, not having seen laughter in a long time. His black hair was neatly trimmed, and his square jaw had a tendency to show beard shadow, but he had shaved carefully only a few hours before. He intended to be presentable for this engagement, no matter how it turned out. History had its requirements. His deep blue uniform was neat and impeccable, the coppery rank insignia prominent on his collar, though he sported no medals or decorations. The general refused to let his men present him with accolades until they had actually won. He had not entered this conflict for glory or wealth, but justice. Tactical display, Mr. Conyer. Let me see the distribution of our ships and project the defenses that Sanjira has mounted. Here they are, general. The TAC officer called up a display of the 463 rebel ships, a fleet that was certainly superior to what the army of the Constellation could muster here on short notice. Destroyers, fast harriers, frigates, sweepers, large carriers, even civilian cargo ships refitted with armor and weapons. Above the capital planet, cargo ships and short-range in-system yachts and transports scattered, seeking shelter. 
A meager ring of security ships kept station near the main stringline hub, the orbiting nexus of interstellar lines that connected the crown jewel planets. Not nearly enough. The general's forces could and would overwhelm the security ships and seize the hub without much resistance. The diadem has mounted no primary defenses that we can see yet, sir. She will, Adolphus said. It couldn't be that easy. Over the code call link, Frank Tello, the general's second in command and a close friend, broke in from the bridge of his own destroyer, cheery as usual. Maybe that's the old bitch's answer. One look at our fleet and she ran to hide in a bomb shelter. I hope she brought sanitary facilities and some extra panties. The men on the Jacobs Bridge chuckled, a release of tension, but Adolphus slowly shook his head. She's not stupid, Frank. Michella knew we were coming, and she's been losing battles for years. If she was going to surrender, she would have cut a deal to save her own skin. He didn't like this. As his fleet spread out and prepared to form a blockade, the surface-to-orbit traffic around Sanjira increased dramatically. Passenger pods and shuttles rose to space, people evacuating the capital world in a disorderly rush. Maybe the bitch already fled, Tello suggested. That doesn't sound like her, Adolphus said. But I'd bet a month's pay that she called for an immediate evacuation to cause chaos. An overloaded stringline hauler accelerated away from the orbiting hub, its framework crowded with passenger pods that dangled like ripe fruit. A second hauler remained docked at the hub, but it would not be loaded in time. The last-minute evacuees would be stranded there in orbit. It's like a stampede. We'd better wrap this up before it turns into an even bigger mess. Four frigates. Take the stringline hub, Adolphus ordered. Minimal damage. No casualties if possible. His first ships streaked in, broadcasting a surrender order. As they approached the hub, the second stringline hauler broke away from the dock and lurched away from the station, only half loaded. Three passenger pods disengaged and dropped free, improperly secured in the rush, and the ovoid vessels tumbled in free orbit. Stop that hauler. No telling who's aboard, Adolphus said into the code call. He dispatched one of his large, slow carriers to block the vessel. Passenger shuttles and evacuating in-system ships flurried about, retreating to the dark side of Sanjira in panic. Adolphus clenched his jaws even harder. The diadem had made them terrified of what he and his supposed barbarians would do. When it was Michella, they should have feared. The second stringline hauler continued to accelerate away from the hub, even as the general's slow carrier moved across its path before it could activate the ultra-fast stringline engines. The carrier pilot yelped over the code call, He's going to ram us, general! Retreat and match speed, but do not deviate from the path. If the hauler pilot insists on a crash, give him a gentle one. The rebel carrier refused to get out of the way even as the hauler moved forward. Adolphus admired the fortitude of the carrier's crew. If the fleeing hauler activated the stringline engines, they would both be a vapor cloud. The hauler closed the distance and the rebel carrier blocked it, slowed it. The two ships collided in space, but the impact was minimal. As the four rebel frigates again demanded the surrender of the stringline hub, the ten small Constellation security ships left their stations and swept forward in a coordinated move, opening fire on the general's warships. Explosions rippled along the first frigate's hull, drawing shouts of astonishment from the crews. What the hell are they doing? Frank Tello cried over the code call. We've got hundreds more ships than they do. Return fire, Adolphus said. Disable engines if possible, but do what you need to do. The frigate captains launched retaliatory fire and three security ships exploded. Two others were damaged, but the rest circled around undeterred. Streams of explosive projectiles flew in all directions, most of them directed at Adolphus's frigates, but countless others missed their targets and acquired nearby vessels, including the evacuating in-system ships that were scrambling away from the stringline hub. When he saw two civilian transports explode, Adolphus yelled for his fleet to close in. No time for finesse. Eradicate those security ships! 
In a hail of return fire, the rebels blew up the vessels before they could cause further damage. The general's jaws ached. He hated useless death. Why wouldn't they stand down? They had no chance against us.